Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries from one of the galaxies not so far away from us, and a discovery in regards to how we believe supermassive black holes gain their size. With the recent NASA article describing this as a black hole delivery service. Something that you can kind of see in this image that I'm going to be explaining in a few seconds. And what makes this discovery particularly interesting is the fact that this is kind of what the scientists predicted the black holes to do in order to grow. But there was never really direct evidence, and now there is. The evidence for the growth of massive black holes by essentially consuming other black holes relatively massive in size as well. And so let's discuss this in more detail, starting with the galaxy itself. The galaxy whose image you see right here, NGC 4424, a galaxy that was actually in the news approximately 10 years ago, when the scientists discovered a type 1a supernova that ended up producing a huge amount of nickel, almost a sun mass worth, and was very likely formed by the collision of two white dwarfs. And because of the proximity to the solar system, this actually made this a particularly interesting discovery. But it's actually still not that close to us, roughly around 55 million light years away. And it's also very likely a member of the very well-known Virgo cluster that contains quite a lot of famous galaxies on the inside. The M87 being the most famous. But what makes this galaxy particularly interesting is an unusual morphology with these unusual shells that seem to imply a distant galactic merger millions of years ago, and specifically at least half a billion years ago, with a relatively long tail, mostly made out of hydrogen, stretching for hundreds of thousands of light years and being a result of the pressure from the collision. But because of this collision, unusually, a lot of the gas ended up being stripped, and so for the most part this galaxy has officially stopped forming stars at least in most parts of the galaxy. In the outer parts, there's really no star formation at all. But in the inner part, there is quite a lot of star formation and quite a lot of activity, which once again confirms that this is probably a result of a galactic collision, something that very likely happened a long, long time ago, with all of the signs of the collision being there as well, except for maybe one sign. What happened to the second galaxy's core? We obviously have the core of this galaxy, but where is the other galaxy? Well, looks like the scientists have officially discovered it. So first of all, the core of this galaxy itself is expected to have a relatively small black hole inside of it, maybe about 100,000 solar masses. But at the moment, the core of this galaxy is relatively quiet. There are no X-rays, no gamma rays, no infrared radiation, and no major activity coming from the center, which we would usually expect from a black hole that's actively feeding. But there is something going on in the region right here. This region does have a lot of activity, it also seems to have an unusual ionized tail stretching at least a few thousand light years, and more importantly, this particular region seems to have a very high velocity of dispersion, suggesting of course that there is something really massive and dense inside of this region that makes the objects like stars move really fast. This would suggest an object that's roughly around 80,000 solar masses, which can really only be a black hole either a really small supermassive black hole or a really large intermediate mass black hole. And the recent observations from this region uncovered something that kind of resembles this. It's a very interesting shape, but it actually has all of the telltale signs of some kind of a core of an ancient galaxy falling into another black hole, or more specifically, falling into another galaxy. Or essentially, it looks like some kind of a cluster that was tidally stretched as it approaches the center of another galaxy something that seems to be several thousand light years in length. And since in terms of size this kind of matches a lot of globular clusters we detect in our own galaxy or a lot of nearby galaxies, but a cluster that was essentially stretched, it can only imply one thing. This indeed seems to be the result of a galactic collision with this being an ancient galactic core. Mostly because a lot of global clusters in the Milky Way galaxy are also believed to be ancient galactic cores that very likely survived for billions of years. But I guess more intriguingly, in this case, it seems to be really falling into the center of NGC 4424, implying a collision and a merger in a few million years. With essentially these two black holes approaching each other close enough until they start orbiting and until they reduce the distance just enough to then fall into one another, very likely creating a more massive black hole, but also disturbing the central region of this galaxy. And since both of the black holes are relatively similar in terms of mass, chances are they might create some kind of a binary system prior to the collision, or, more likely, the second black hole might actually overshoot, escaping the system completely. In other words, depending on the final velocity of the second black hole, 
they might actually not collide at all. But I guess one of the questions here is, what happened to the rest of the galaxy? We clearly see the center of it, but where is the rest? Well, the answer to this is relatively simple. It's not uncommon for galaxies orbiting one another to slowly strip the smaller galaxy of pretty much everything on the outside before it eventually falls into the bigger galaxy and becomes absorbed. And though we don't really see this in this galaxy because of the distances, quite a lot of these features have been recently discovered around the Milky Way. We normally call them stellar streams, and more and more of these stellar streams are being discovered pretty much every single year. These are really large gas and star formations stretching hundreds of thousands of light years around the Milky Way, and they'll also very often have some kind of a global cluster somewhere in the vicinity. So these are basically the remnants of ancient galaxies that very likely experienced something similar to this, that over time got shredded by our own galaxy, creating stellar streams. And that's of course because one of the galaxies is just a little bit larger. And so that's kind of what's very likely happening here as well. With this particular feature now being called Nikuli, named after an Indian festival. And so in this case, the scientists think that this Nikuli represents a kind of a black hole delivery service, which is why NASA referred to it as that. It's an ancient core of a galaxy that's slowly moving closer and closer to the center of the bigger galaxy and will probably get absorbed by it completely in the next few millions of years. In more scientific terms, this is known as the black hole seeding. And in the future, in the next few billions of years, it might resemble something like this. These are known as the lenticular galaxies. Galaxies that are not really spiral, but not elliptical either, kind of in between. And they also are generally some of the most beautiful galaxies out there. And that's kind of what the scientists believe is going to happen to this galaxy as well, once it stabilizes and once all the collisions are finished. But I guess for now, that's pretty much all we know. It's a pretty intriguing discovery, but until the scientists investigate this more with other telescopes, we're not going to know much more. If you'd like to learn more about other galactic discoveries or other black hole discoveries, check out some of the videos that should be popping up somewhere above the screen. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.